Hello and welcome to Youth and Sports, where every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. we feature special guests from near and far. The program is sponsored by ATI Physical Therapy, providing certified athletic trainers to more than 30 area high schools and colleges. First State Orthopedics, the team taking care of Delaware with a commitment to excellence. And Wilmington University, where Youth and Sports is produced by the College of Technology's students and faculty. And now, from the studio at President Jack Barcelona's Wilmington University, your host Hosts for Youth and Sports, ALSSM Mr. Sports Medicine 2012, Dr. Michael Axe, UD and St. Elizabeth's own Dr. Joseph Strait, and co-founder of Youth and Sports, Mr. Walter Laudine. Good evening, welcome to Youth and Sports. I'm Walter Ladeen. We're here at beautiful Wilmington University. I'm Dr. Joseph Strait. And I'm Dr. Michael Axe. And we have the patents with us tonight. If you've been following sports <laughs> in Delaware, you have uh, heard of these two young men, but you may not have met their mom before. This is her coming out <laughs> party for, uh, for Erica. But we have Andre, his mom, Erica, and uh, his brother, uh, Eric, who all were St. Elizabeth's uh, uh, well, certainly the boys were. Certainly the boys went to St. Elizabeth. Erica, where did you go to high school? I graduated from Padua. From? Padua. Oh, from Padua. Okay. Well, there's no boys in Padua. So there was. <laughs> you guys went You didn't have to make a hard decision. Well, it's been an exciting time. We're going to go to you first, Mom, because you've had to live through having great careers by both your sons. Uh, both Eric, who graduated last year and will be becoming a, a player at Delaware this year, and Andre, who will be off to Rutgers and play for the Knights there at the, in New Jersey. Uh, you've lived through people calling on the phone, wanting to talk to your sons, and, and recruiting trips and so forth. How have you hung, up with, hung out with all this stuff? Has it been a, a busy couple years for you, or what, what's been happening? Yes, happen? the most important thing is over. It's over. <laughs> It was hard to decide, but I know it's not my decision, so it was really up to them where they go. When did you think the, when did it all begin? When did this college stuff begin? When Eric was a junior? Is that when it started to get the phone calls because they, they could contact you? But when did you get started getting involved? Uh, freshman year, they started getting letters freshman year from colleges. And what were you thinking as a mom? What was your goals for them? Knowing that they were good athletes, you wanted them to stay healthy, and for the most part they did. Uh, well, what was your what was your goal for for their education in the future? What were you looking for in a college for them? To make sure they had a bridge to get to the education, and sports was that. So, as long as I kept them busy and involved, then I knew they could do it. I mean, how many college coaches did you meet? Uh, maybe five. Maybe five. One of the things that we've noticed about the college coaches is, boy, they can sell you iced in the winter, you know? Is there any one of them, did you have predetermined when you just watched them and, and they first came in that you liked them, didn't like them? Was there anyone that made you feel a little uneasy or that uh, you liked right away? All recruiters are pushy, but the coaches seem like they are not as pushy as the recruiters. You found that? Yes. They're a little, um, they're direct, but they're not so uh, sending the mail and the Facebook and the text messages. They don't Did you do feel that. like they were telling you the truth? Sometimes. Sometimes. But you have to see through all of that. Right. How did you learn to do that? Because you had a little bit with Eric and you had a lot with Andre. Okay. Right. So you obviously, my mother wasn't prepared for, for the amount of phone calls that she was going to get when I was in high school and right. being recruited. And she learned along the way. What did you, how did you develop your, your whole... Uh, I wouldn't talk to him. Okay. At all. I don't like the pushiness. And if I didn't talk to him, then they couldn't talk to me, right? And they couldn't sell me anything. So when they became of age, they talked to them more and sold them dreams. And then when it didn't make any sense, that's when I got involved. That's what, what I... I well, they didn't make any sense. Like I said, if they tell you the truth, you kind of know it. You kind of have a feeling. You're a mother, you're a woman. You got that instinct. I know my wife's got a better instinct than I am when you people. She's got a great first impression. I got a terrible first impression. <laughs> I'll like somebody and wind up, you know, no good. And I'll not like and wind up best friends. Did you, as a woman, you have that good first impression? Sometimes. Sometimes. 
sometimes. Not all the time. Um, well, because I am a woman, so I'm not a I'm not a man. They can't approach me the same way they approach them or their fathers. So I don't. I'm standoffish anyway. So it takes a lot for me to get to know them anyway. So when you uh, were watching the games in the stands, did you sit with the other parents there? Or did you need to sit by yourself? How did you watch a game? Um, we sat as a family. It was hard, especially football. Um, How did you do when people were making mean comments? I laughed. Okay. Good for you. Yeah, that was one of the, <laughs> that was one of the things. I agree with you. Yeah. It's, a way to it's get hard to sit in the stands to hear them. And this started how long ago? Because I know we were already at the college. We're talking about college for both of you guys, but we talked about this This started 14, 14 years for us. Years. So. At Brandywine Warriors. Oh, I was the president of Brandywine Warriors. Really? I love Brandywine Warriors. We had a ball. Been <laughs> around, what, 27, 28 years? Mm. Yeah, they threw them out. <laughs> <laughs> and did you guys play together then? Mm -hmm. Same teams? Mm -hmm. Well, was it weight based at that time? Yeah, or was yeah it was weight based. Oh, yeah. When I came into the Brandywine Warriors, don't listen to him, I bought all new equipment, all new helmet, everything. And the reason being. And he is, sent me the bill. <laughs> I wait. No, the reason being is your mother, that you send your kids, you pay for them, and they keep the money. And the next thing you know, they're keeping it. They got $50,000 in the Brandywine Little League one year. And I'm like, if my kid's playing, and the, the kids that are playing now, they should get the stuff that they're paying for and let the other people, when they come in, pay more. buy their stuff. I, I think that that's fair. But thank heavens for organizations that gave you a chance to play. Yeah. Right. right. And show that you had these, these talents. Obviously, you both started playing as freshmen at St. East. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the get-go. Was, uh, is that what your expectation was when you went to St. E's? You said, I'm going to go there, I'm going to play as a freshman? Well, I was more focused about basketball, so football was just another sport. But once I, once I played, you know, it was, it kind of got better as it, go, as it went on because I didn't start in the beginning of the season. But as the season went on, I played more and more. And then when sophomore year came, then I started. What, what made you go to St. Elizabeth's over all the other schools around? My brother. I wanted to just keep you playing with to him. You follow with him to play with him, yeah. which he had been for years. Mm -hmm. How about you, Eric? I have no clue. She chose the school. So. <laughs> All right. Good job, Mom. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things. Uh, what happened the first time you had to tackle your brother? He never tackled me. I never tackled me. <laughs> <laughs> he never got me. <laughs> <laughs> what happened the first time you had to cover your brother on a pass route? I just, I just held on to him. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you pick Rutgers? Rutgers, because it was it was closer. You know, all the other schools, they it was in the same conference, but it was the whole distance thing. Who's the coach for Rutgers? Kyle Flood. And you like him? Mm, real good guy. Did you believe him? Whatever he said. Believed everything. Okay. Just about. Do you like him, Mom? I really like him. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. a good start. Mm -hmm. yes. That's a good start. What did he tell you? Why, why, what did he tell you that made you choose Rutgers, besides the fact that you liked him? Well, he told me it wasn't all based on football. It was more on education. And that was a good thing? Yeah, because education comes first. What's what, going to what be your major? Mm -hmm. Major, I think I'm going to go in undecided for about my first two years, and then as the years go on, then I'll probably pick a major. Well, you can't do it for three years, can you? No. No, but, but here's the point. Uh, obviously, uh, Andre, and I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know, there's, there's a high expectation. You stay healthy, you may get a chance to play on Sundays, okay? Yeah. So you have a chance to do that. Uh, he's uh, another one of those, just he has the height to put on 25 pounds. He'll expand his stride when he gets, clears everybody and instead of taking those peepee steps that he takes, <laughs> and he still blows people away, but uh, that'll all get better as a function of, uh, of coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, you need to protect yourself out there because the, the, the guys that were trying to recruit you in, in college are nothing like the guys that are going to try to recruit you at the next level. Those guys you really can't believe. Yeah. And you do have to protect yourself. And certainly a degree in business may be helpful. Are you going to let Eric be your agent? or Because uh, <laughs> you're both going to graduate at the same time now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, do you have those kind of dreams? Yeah. But, I mean, I always got to have a fallback plan. Absolutely. And that's one of the things it's that... It's called injuries. Uh, you just can't control for that. You, you can't. You can't. And, and the fact is, it's so, it's so tough. 
Mm -hmm. It's so tough now. What what is it like two percent, Mike? What were you saying that two percent of the of the players in today's colleges will make the pros? No, less than one percent. Less than one percent. Less than one percent. That's and a certainly, tough statistic. And the the play time is less than five years and more than half. Yeah. So it's it's not a long. That's why it's great to get there and and play and participate, but know that you want the contacts you're making. It's all about about context. Eric, what are you going to study at Delaware? What are you studying at Delaware? I'm in between with like environmental engineering and, and uh, business. I don't know what business I want to choose yet, though. But do Eric, you, you got to talk in your outside voice. They won't oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm in between environmental engineering and business. I'm not sure what business I want to go in. Well, you, have the, you guys both had a pretty crusty coach that you grew up with, you know. I always call Coach Hemphill. He reminds me of oh. Danny DeVito, <laughs> you know. He doesn't tell you you do a good job very often, but he'll tell you you do a yeah. – he, he's a little bit hard, <laughs> a little bit harsh on occasion. I think that hasn't right. changed since Dr. Yeah, Straight played been, for him. He's been there for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> he's a but, good guy, though. But he'll get you ready to play. Yeah. And that, that's an, a fun thing. Did you miss not playing this year? A lot. I missed it a lot. Well, that, and what are you going to play at Delaware? What position? Linebacker. Okay. Yeah. And you're certainly that is one of the things that uh, that you enjoy playing when you yes. weren't running the ball. Definitely. I mean, I like scoring touchdowns too, but you know, hitting people is better. Who's the new coach at Delaware? Coach Brock. Yeah. Brock mm -hmm. from Rutgers. Yeah. Oh, that's mm -hmm. how. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I got it. I got it. It was good because he was his recruiter at one point. I got it. I got so it. So Coach Brock actually was recruiting you at the time. Well, he was my receivers coach, so he would come down and then. Actually, Coach Cohen is my re recruiting coach. Oh. No, that's now, Dave Cohen from Delaware. Delaware. Yes. Yes. Right. And now yes. <laughs> he ends up being your coach. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. all related. It, it's all it related. can be. Definitely Football can be, is yeah. a small family. It is. I mean, it's, it is. Uh, it's an exciting thing. what's really thing. nice is mom's going to be able to see them both. Right. They're close enough. Sure. Mom has been seeing them on the same sidelines for years, and now is going to be able to see them both because you stayed relatively close, and mm -hmm. you're right in your own backyard. It's yes. just scarier because the men are bigger. <laughs> So oh, yeah, how do you handle that? My mom didn't handle the, the, the contact too I'm well. I'm a nervous wreck. Like, I play. Like, I got the pads on. But <laughs> um, basketball is easier to watch. But football, even with them being the hitter, it's hard to watch sometimes. Especially this one on your right. <laughs> he brings it every down. But you couldn't, can you imagine every year he hurts someone? You know, someone's getting hurt because he tackled them. So it's tough as a parent to see that. Well, the new regulations, I'm telling you, I foresee them having tough times fielding teams anymore with people sitting out for concussions. Now they're talking about you're not allowed to tackle with your head. I mean, what are you going to do? Where are you gonna, how are you going to tackle? Well, you, there's, there's certainly ways to tackle that are effective. And, and I understand the, the feeling you have when you, you tackle someone, you're playing to the ball, and both these athletes, uh, both, both boys, are, are very clean football players. Well, they, a defensive player is going to have a tough time right, the way I see it right now. Uh, well, yeah. they, you can play to the whistle, and that's the most important thing. We're going to do a break and come back right after this. I will keep dancing on point, even if it hurts. Ah, my arm is killing me. I don't know if I can pitch another ball. But I'll just play through the pain anyway. I have to do the big stunts. They look better than the other cheerleaders. Their tosses are bigger. <sighs> my elbow really aches, but I've got to be better. Don't tell them it hurts. It'll take you out of the game if you do. I have to push harder if I'm going to get a scholarship. I'm feeling dizzy, but I don't want to tell anyone. Everyone's counting on me. I can't rest now. Nearly 50% of all sports injuries sustained by middle and high school students are from overuse. Don't play through the pain. See your health care provider and follow their instructions for rest and recovery. Take the pledge. Become an advocate for sports safety. Visit StopSportsInjuries.org.
All right, we're back on Youth in Sports, and we have two Elizabeth, St. Elizabeth ba uh, football players and one basketball player, but they're going they to colleges. They both are basketball they're players. They're going to college as football players. I got to ask why. <laughs> <laughs> the Pattons, Eric and Andre and their mom, Erica. Listen, what, you're going to ask them why what, Walter? Yeah, why, why did you decide that football was it and, and not proceed, pursue basketball? Or baseball. Or baseball. Well, baseball, I stopped playing in eighth grade. And then I tried it out in high school, but I didn't really like it like that no more. So, but the whole football thing, my recruiting was more heavy with football than basketball, so I kind of had to choose that. That's but you look like me. you're having so much fun on the court. You look like you're just the basketball comes so easy, and you and uh, you just you smile a lot more playing well, basketball than you do during football. You can see it a lot. That's better. because they don't see it through his helmet. Yeah. What do you think, what mom, when he goes back to field to kick? You know, is that the, the time that you have that you're in your throat the most? No. No, that didn't bother you. No, because you can when you're on the sideline, you almost can see the path that he's about to run. So mm -hmm. you, you almost can see it. So, and he usually doesn't get tackled then. <laughs> no. So that's easier. Yeah, that is easier. What's it like having a, a mom who understands the game, can actually talk the sport with you? Because she obviously, uh, or does she talk a lot of, does, does she understand it as well as she seems to understand it? A lot it more basketball than yeah. football. Oh, she's more basketball. Yeah. She doesn't really Could you hear any guys at home? When you, if, you, if you happen to yeah. have screwed up that game, Look, do you hear more basketball. She, yeah. She's she trying to give us some like, advice. Yeah. That's all advice. <laughs> That's it. Did you play basketball paddle? Yeah. I thought maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Could you hear your mom from the stands? No. No. I can't, you can't hear anything, honestly. You just I don't know. My son can hear my, my wife. No. Yeah. <laughs> you, got the, you got the chance to see games at Delaware, and it's a noisy stadium, and you mm -hmm. got to see games at Rutgers, and that's a noisy stadium. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are you looking, do you think when you go in that you're going to have playing time as a freshman? Do you expect to play? Uh, yeah, I expect to play. You know, whether it's the wide out like they said I would play or it would be like some special teams. So either way, I, I think I'll be able to play. You don't think you'll see defense in college? I'm not hoping. Yeah, I got you. You're hoping that they just play offense? Yeah. And you're not planning on seeing offense? Uh, possibly. I mean, not at the moment, no, but... You know, there's still a possibility. We still play. have a lot of problems on fourth and one. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we still have a lot of problems on fourth and one. <laughs> All right, St. Elizabeth's alumni guy out there. You, you, you've watched a lot of people come and go. You've watched these guys play. What, uh, Both of them. Both what? of them are excellent players. Um, the first one I saw was, it was Eric. And what, what really, um, during the finals of the year that you guys won, you made a pick. <laughs> on a pass that I was just, I was amazed that at a middle linebacker with your size that you were able to have that much agility jumping wise and everything and I was like wow this kid's a stud and it came out and I was like I, I, where's he going to school? That was the first question, where's he going to school because you don't see that too often and then at the time I didn't even know you guys were brothers mm -hmm. and you well, made they look so much like, alike. Well, <laughs> 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 and you made a big play in the game and when he, he, Mike goes oh yeah they're brothers and I was like oh, okay I see that the, the genes are there yeah. so it was just a, amazing over the couple past years that you guys had how, how much did you know the, the talent that was there mm -hmm. um, it was fun to watch us play, and, and of course, you know, but being my team, it made it a lot easier because I was going to see well, you yeah. guys play all the, the time thing anyway. Is, is you, the accolades of basketball. I mean, this year, am I correct? You were the he was the I, player I was of the year. Player of the year in basketball. Mm -hmm. So this is someone who's the player of the year in basketball in the state of Delaware, and is going. And to both he to play and his brother football. were the defensive players of the year in football. And he he was twice correct. Yeah, yeah. He, two years in a row. Your soft, or your junior and your senior year. Yeah. So. A lot of accolades that you guys and awards you guys have won. How much furniture have they broken in the house? <laughs> Honestly, no. No? They don't? No. When we were younger, we probably well, a little bit. Are they always outside? A couple were of they windows. outside together <laughs> playing things? And they had to be outside. They had to. They had, they're too big to be inside. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, did you enjoy most about the recruiting process? I know there was things you didn't enjoy, but what did you enjoy? Um, what did I enjoy? Mm -hmm. I guess I would have to say the trips, <laughs> the traveling. 
I guess I would go on to different campuses. So, which was your best? What was your best trip? Was it to Rutgers? It was, was to Rutgers. It was your it best. It was to Rutgers. But okay. and what did they do? Tell me what they did for the parents for that trip. Okay. So what? Um, did, so you got there on a Friday. We got there during the day on a Friday. So did they? Were you there with other parents as well? We were with the whole recruiting team. Okay, so they had two rounds of recruiting. They had the first round. And no, they uh, just had the first round. They just had one recruiting, and oh. it was all the seniors. Okay, they had how many people there then? It was about. It was about I want to say like, thirteen, fourteen other. People. They had a second one, son. You just weren't there. <laughs> yeah, that was just, that was us, uh, because that was my official. The yes. first one was, I want to say it was in November or December, so that was the second. What they do is they have the first group that they're going to offer, mm -hmm. and then they have the second group that they'll put, that they'll bring in as well on another weekend. You'll see that at Delaware that they'll have multiple weekends, and some. but the first group is they obviously wanted you to come, mm -hmm. and they wanted you with the other players. Did you see anybody else uh, while you, so you went there on Friday. So tell me the rest of the day. So did they take you to lunch? Did they put you, you know, with the I other parents? Uh, was it was a fresh fry that night then they had a social for us that for the parents Friday night and they put the kids separate right they right. went off the kids went off to a party what information did they share with you as a parent to make you feel comfortable that they could act on your behalf at, at college honestly it was the visit prior to that it was us being seated, seated down and them telling us about their education program and what they require of the football player. Did you like the study hall mandate that they were going to have Absolutely. tutors? Absolutely. And they Do you think your guys need that though? They seem to be pretty I disciplined. I think all freshmen need it. I do too. Especially in that situation when you're putting your time in and you're going to, I mean, you're probably already working out and training, but when you get up there and that training schedule just mm -hmm. jumps exponentially. You're going to need someone to be on both of you for your education and having someone there for, that the team supplies to kind of guide you in your education, in your studies, and keeping you out of trouble, which you guys have both been very good, you know, uh, students, I'll say, but good people. Well, that's one of the area. things the school looks at. They want to make sure that these kids, when they give them something, that they're going to be able to take advantage of it. Otherwise, they're not going to give it to them. And uh, certainly these two gentlemen fit the bill. What I want to know is that... Um, did they give you a winter a, a workout program before going? Uh, right after signing. Did he suggest that. it, or did, did he have a, a, a some kind of mentor that? Uh, That's what he said. Right after signing. Go ahead. After Go signing there, about a week after signing there, they sent me a packet, like a workout packet, like for things to do in the weight room and like on the field. Did you meet the strength coach at, at Rutgers? Mm -hmm. So you went in and actually got a chance to. Yeah, I so, met him a few times. Are you guys working out together? No. No. I have a different workout schedule. So you have your own workout oh, schedule? Oh, what's, work the, what's the difference in the workout schedule? You guys have certainly looked at each other's workout schedule. Oh, no, I haven't looked at his yet. You haven't? I, no. Mm -hmm. You haven't the, looked at his? He's been at school. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. During, okay. Uh, during the winter, I had they gave me my own schedule. But that's completely different from what you do when you're there. It's a lot more intense. Well, there they're watching you. <laughs> well, I mean that, but I always do. I always do everything the way I'm supposed to do. I don't. I never slack off, especially during the winter when I wasn't in school and I wasn't playing. I always made it, so I did everything 100. percent Is there anything that they want you to do that you don't think is appropriate for you? Like every, you, you've worked out all your life, your your adult no. life, or you haven't? Only I only started really lifting weights junior and senior year. Is that right? No, he was that kind of gift. Yeah. Okay, okay. That, that's okay. The, that, he looked like that because uh, it's, it's called genetics. What about you? Did you start working out early or? Mm -hmm. I started working out a little bit freshman year, but it got more serious sophomore through senior year. When you got the workout schedule from Rutgers, was there anything that you thought was not in your belly hook? No, not really. I mean, it was different, different things. Harder. Oh. Yeah, more reps. More reps. Let's just say that. Harder? More intense. Yes. More intense? Yes. More reps? Yes. And, okay. and that's how practice will be, and that's how your workouts and your strength and conditioning stuff will be. Mm -hmm. It'll be more intense, and it's just getting you ready. Yes. Well, the one thing about it, when you're in great shape and you work out, you have less of a chance of getting hurt. Right, Mike? Uh, there's certainly wrong place, wrong time injuries are, are usually a function of fatigue, uh, and you can be from doing too much. 
I still want to hear about your weekend, so I'm not letting you off the hook yet. So you got the fish fry. It was Friday. Hey, do you have another kid I don't know about no, that you're going to no, 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 no. go? Or? This, is, this is important because she's a mom who lived through two different types of recruiting techniques. The Division One AA, which is one type, and Division One, uh, which is the, the big time. And, and they are having her here to be able to share both of those experiences is unique. Uh, more than you're going to find on, on most situations. And I think that, that one of the reasons why we've adopted this family type of show is to say, well, how is it for the parents? What should other moms, what your recommendation, we'll do that in the last segment. Okay, so another mom has two kids that are really talented as well. What recommendations, what advice would you give that mom when the process took place? What did you learn from the whole thing? So they went up there, they impressed you with what they were going to do with academics. I can't imagine, though, a lot of schools don't say the, the same thing. They, they know what the parents want to hear. They want to hear about the graduation mm -hmm. rate. So what's the graduation rate for Rutgers football players? Well, it was the percentages of football players that have over a 3.0. OK. So there is How was club? that? They did pretty good? It's, it's mm -hmm. like a club. And the majority of the players want to be in that club. They do? Yes. I don't know if it's, you get better treatment oh, I'll or bet you do. extra, but <laughs> it's something that bonus. everybody strives for, you know, so you can't slack off. Did you meet any of the professors? No. Oh. Yes, yeah, we, we had met, met two professors, What'd an English professor and a Ooh. Spanish professor. They were very nice. Very nice. That's excellent. Yes. Did they bring in the educational part and they actually... You know, right. on a football recruiting well, I think that's the way to sell it. That's great. Yeah. That is a great that's, way that's of doing it. That's the way to sell it, parents. So what was the, what was the thing that uh, we have a minute left in this segment? So what was the one thing, though, that stood out and said, you know what, I'll be happy if, if Andre chooses Rutgers? Because, as you said, it was going to be his decision, but you were going to have a bias. Right. At the time, Coach Brock came down. He was very nice, and we were joking and everything, and he turns to me and says, we're, we're friends, but I'm not his friend. I'm his coach. And I think there needs to be a difference. I don't want him to go in as friends. I want him to go in as a player and a coach. It's a different relationship. Yeah, it's like and a mom. role model. Yeah, it's it's like, more expectation. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. And, and you don't get better without, uh, uh, without being pushed right. to your limits. And, and mm -hmm. really, and we'll get to this in the next segment, uh, you're going to be playing here in Delaware. You played in a very competitive league. With the, the teams you played because the folks you were playing with uh, weren't all of your caliber. So mm -hmm. there were expectations of both of you to do a lot more than, than some of the other players because they weren't capable. We're going to go to a break and come back uh, right after this with the Patents talking to Andre, their mom Erica, and Eric. What does opportunity mean to you? At Wilmington University, it means providing a personalized educational experience where students learn anywhere at any time. Wilmington University provides a variety of ways to complete your degree. Choose the flexibility of online learning or attend classes during the day, in the evening, or on weekends at locations throughout the region. It's your degree. Choose how you earn it. Personalized education, affordable tuition. That's the difference at Wilmington University. opportunity mean to you? At Wilmington University, it means finding an innovative degree program that fits your goals and prepares you for a successful career. It means finding a school that fits your life. We know the importance of providing individual attention, affordable tuition, and unparalleled flexibility and service. Because at Wilmington University, it's not about meeting your expectations, it's about exceeding them. Personalized education, affordable tuition, that's the difference at Wilmington University. Welcome back to Youth in Sports. We're here with the Pathans, Andre, 
to Mom Erica and Eric. Uh, if you haven't been in touch with uh, Delaware Sports, uh, uh, Andre is on his way to Rutgers. Uh, Eric is going to empty nest and buy a dog. And uh, <laughs> Eric's going to uh, go to the University of Delaware where he plans on playing linebacker. Thanks for coming down and sharing the experiences uh, with us. Let's go first uh, back to you, Andre. You have been through the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. You've had looked at different schools. If you had another athlete out there uh, that's about to go through the process, what, uh, what have you learned from all this? What's your takeaways and what advice would you give to another young person who is going to be recruited like you? I would, probably, I would tell them to actually make sure you do your research on the school. Don't just go there because of what they say. Actually, go there, visit, make sure you have your pros and cons of the school. And did you have a list of, did you have rankings for things that were going to be important to you and that you were going to look at? And did you have a numerical system where you gave them a five to a one? Or how did you, how did you make your list of what was going to be important? I kind of made my, like, I kind of made a list of schools based on when I visited or if I liked them or how their offense was based because that's what I would be playing. All right, so what, what turned you off right away? In other words, what did the school do? You don't have to tell me the school and please don't, but what did they do <laughs> that you just saw this and you said, nope, this is not happening for me here? Was there one particular thing? No, no, not really. So all of them yeah. do a pretty good job. Yeah. Did you learn anything about the process your brother went through or going through it together? Was there anything you guys shared while going through kind of recruiting? I know it's D1 and D1 AA, but you still were going through it. Yeah, I, what I learned from him was basically to, you know, keep my options open yeah. because anything can happen because, you know, with him and the old Pitch, Pittsburgh school. So you got to make sure you keep your options open. Smart. Good, yeah. good way of learning the back about it. Uh, when you, so what did Rutgers do? You know, your mom had the fish fry. What did Rutgers do right that you said, okay, that it's three hours away, that was a plus, right? Mm -hmm. It was going to be within striking distance that, that your family could come and watch you play. They have at least uh, a half a dozen games they are going to be on TV. So they play in a televised market site. So if you can't make it, you can, you can get to see that. Uh, do they allow you to work? How does it work right now for an athlete? How much are you allowed to work? How much are you allowed to make, you know, as far as financially uh, without being in violation of the NCAA? One of my issues that I had a lot uh, with the NCAA is not allowing the young people to, to make uh, spending money. And so, therefore, you then have the issues with the, with the alumni mm -hmm. trying to help out. Get and them. I had to, when I would have Delaware athletes bartend for me, I had to submit to the athletic department to say, yeah, they work for me. I was allowed to pay X amount of dollars per hour. This is the money that I paid them mm -hmm. uh, for that so that it didn't look as if they were getting money under the, the, the table. Yeah. Uh, did, they, did, they ask, did you ask about summer employment? Are you expected to stay there in the summer and go to class? And do they get you a job? How's that work? Well, this summer, I'm supposed to go there. I'm leaving. Take classes. Gym. Yes. But the, they didn't really say nothing about the whole work thing. Can I say? No, please, please. It's the Pell Grant. The Pell Grant, okay. Right. All right. It's what you qualify for as a family. And then whatever you qualify for, the, the boys will receive it gotcha. each year. So that substitute the working because they don't have time to work. Well, they don't have time to work, mm -hmm. and that's one of my issues, that it just isn't fair. You can't be, be doing this and that at the same time. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, okay. Uh, but that's good. I think that that's a, a better way of working. The, the how about some of the other fun things? I mean, I know we're talking about making money and stuff, but how about like the stadium, the training room, the workout facilities, the... Did they like to have a locker for you? What did they do to try to make you feel special, you as a player? Well, you know, they bought the uniforms out, all the new helmets and stuff, and then they showed us the locker room, the, uh, the weight room, so... The one, the one good thing about their weight room is they got a 40-yard dash in there. And every other school that I've been to, I haven't seen one. So that was pretty impressive. Okay. Well, yeah, but then you can't fib about how fast you are. <laughs> 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 yeah, they're always going to do that for you. Is there an indoor football stadium? Uh, yes, they have a bubble. Uh -huh. no, indoor and outdoor. 
I mean, it's a, a lot of these things are, I, mean, I don't want to say they're extras because it's becoming normals, but I mean, I remember when UConn actually put theirs up. I mm -hmm. mean, and it really brought a lot of kids to their program because of having an indoor stadium and being able to listen, change the music, make it higher so that when you're in an indoor stadium, stadium you get to learn what the music's like and the noise so you can practice like that. So I'm starting to see more in those, those things coming up. All right, so let me ask you another question. Do you see who else they were recruiting at the same time? Did you look <laughs> at the, the other folks that they were taking in the freshman class? Had you already checked out how many wideouts they had coming back? Uh, at Rutgers before you went up for the visit? Yeah, they actually told me because uh, I know Brandon Coleman, he was coming back. And then three three seniors was graduating and then another receiver moved to the defensive side. So, I mean, it was kind of great timing for me to go in. Okay. Then that, uh, okay, so they had that part of things and, and that's always a fun thing. So, you're in this, right now it's a matter of you're going in with the other freshmen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know who? Did you look at their recruiting class? Yeah. Um, most of the kids that I was down there or up there with on my official visit, like I met them, and most of them signed a letter into. It. Okay. Now, how many were linemen? How many were, were How many were skilled people like yourself? It was probably probably two other kids, two other kids that was receivers, and then there was linemen, and then like different defensive players. Now, of the skilled people that are there right now, did they, in the days past, they would put linemen with linemen and skilled people with skilled people. Did you have upperclassmen that took you out and showed you around campus? Did mm -hmm. you have those kind of times? Yeah, I have Brandon Coleman. Okay. So. So they gave you, now he'll be a senior? He'll be a redshirt junior. Redshirt junior. So what that does is that's, that'll be your workout partner probably for, for at least part of the time, right? He'll yeah. show you the ropes? Yeah. But they, usually they have the freshmen, like the underclassmen, work out in the weight room. But mm -hmm. I mean, you can work out separately, like on the field, with the upperclassmen if you like. I want to get to Eric. Absolutely. Uh, I'm coming over to you to find out you are a year older than your brother, year and a half older, you said. Yes. Um, you graduated St. Elizabeth's, what, two years ago now? Yes. Does that sound right? And you took a year off. Yes. And you're at University of Delaware taking classes now. Yes. And how was your recruiting? How did you get to University of Delaware? Honestly, University of Delaware was probably like one of my third schools to go to. Mm -hmm. Because at first I had I was going to looking at Pitt because a recruiter came down and was talking to me. But then everything got all crazy with uh, the coaching change. Yes. He left and went to Arizona State. And they wanted me to come down there and basically try out for the team without scholarship. So I didn't really like that idea. So I ended up going to the University of Delaware. Then everything got, everything was Oh, crazy there. And too. then it got crazy again because <laughs> Coach Keeler is no longer there. And you yes. got Coach Brock, who happened She's to recruit a, your brother for yeah. Rutgers now. Isn't that a turnabout? Of, changes in a year? Oh, <laughs> my heavens, yeah. I mean, but everything was fine. Like, every, like, everyone was, like, brotherhood and family. So we all came together and stayed together and knew everything was going to be okay. Well, that's how it's like for the recruiting at, at, at the Delaware level. Do they um, bring you in for a day or is it a weekend? And Oh, we, we came in for a day mm -hmm. on our visit. They showed us the campus, they showed us around, and then we had, um, we ate with the head coach and Jerry O and a couple other people, and then Paul Warlow was there too. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So what did you, what was your thoughts about the Delaware Day? Compared, you'd just I mean, been I, to, you'd just been, no, mom was talking mom, to you. No, sorry. You know, you'd just been to, to Rutgers, right? And you had the Delaware. What was the similarities? What was the differences? What was your comfort level? Um, I like Delaware. It was close. <laughs> Can't get much closer. <laughs> but it's far enough away that he won't be home a lot. Um, I would have to say I've only been to Delaware once for recruiting. Rutgers a few times. Have you been to many games at Delaware? The football no. games? No. Okay. But we watch Delaware football games. Mm -hmm. have My you father been? is yes. a graduate of the University of Delaware, so we have a lot of University of Delaware. <laughs> but I like University of Delaware because of the head coach. Honestly, I like his brassness in our interview process. I like all of that. I like the fact that he was about working very hard to get a positive outcome, you know. I don't know if you've seen the recent article about attendance in class and how it's monitored in such a way and it's been such so well received by the the uh, uh, professors, 
in that he's adopted an attitude that he expects you guys to go to class. And believe me, let me tell you one thing. If you go to class, college is a lot easier than not going to class. And there are people that think, well, I can, because there's not someone hitting you over the head with something, although at Delaware that's, that's changed a little bit, and I'm sure that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, will you take summer classes this yes. summer? Yes. Okay. If you, what is your, what's your strength academic? Are you a math-minded guy or are you an English-minded guy? Where's math. Your, math, okay. Which means you're going to have to work a little harder in the, the writing side of things, right? Yeah. That's well, on your side. I like math, but I'm really, I'm Both a good math. writer, though. I took classes in the summer at the University of Delaware, too, and I got an A in my English class, so. There you go. So, yeah, that was good. And then your, but your engineering, when you said you wanted to yes. do some form of, a lot of engineering, math. a lot of math. So you're working out with strength and conditioning coaches now yes. with your, with yes. your off-season workouts. Yes. And then how about with education? Uh, I know that we talked about when we say tutors, but they have like tutors for the football teams, the sports teams. Are you guys working with some? Yeah, we, like have, we have mentors study hall, and then we have tutors that come and introduce themselves. And then we, we get to pick if we want a certain tutor for a certain night. That's great. We've been talking about a program at the University of Delaware uh, where there would be senior mentorship based upon people that have been successful in business, people that have been successful in the pro ranks, if you, you had an aspiration to go on that way, where you actually had someone that you could talk to that has actually been through, that's been a CEO of a major corporation. And they're going to be all Delaware grads. It's something that I had proposed years ago. We've only had, uh, in the last 20 years, we haven't had a starting player go to med school. And it's been kind of uh, bothered me a fair amount that that hasn't taken place. Uh, of course, when you look at my alma mater, Bucknell, they haven't had a whole lot there either. So I can't say that it's just Delaware. But it is something that we're looking forward to, and I'm hoping that they'll have a, a similar thing at Rutgers where they have people that you can actually talk to with real life experiences mm -hmm. that want to commit to that kind of thing so it doesn't become an issue with alumni just, just providing you with resources. They yeah. want These are real resources. These are lifetime resources. These are things that, that people get to go. and. Uh, we're going to come back. Uh, we have the patents here today, Andre, Erica, the mom, and Eric, and we'll be back right after this. I know they never make me play with these guys, but why do they make me train like them? Training hard is important, and for professional athletes, it's their job. But kids aren't professionals and shouldn't train at that level. Keep kids safe on the playing field and out of the operating room. Become an advocate for sports safety. Visit StopSportsInjuries.org. Welcome back to Youth and Sports. We're here today with the uh, Patton family and uh, getting back, this is our last uh, segment and one of the big things I wanted to know was is these guys have been playing football together for years and we talked about them going now to two uh, separate colleges. And that won't play against each other. We hope, we hope, <laughs> <laughs> at least for now. That's right. Um, but my biggest question was is last year was your first season in a while not playing with your brother. So mm -hmm. first thing is I want to know about how that went, the differences, the struggles, knowing where he was all the time, and then secondly, what it's going to be like playing on two different college teams. So I'll start with you. 
Well, the, the big difference was especially on defense, you know, because usually you can make all the tackles, so I had to be more in shape, let's just say that. <laughs> and then on offense, I mean, I was wide receiver too, but, you know, Coach Hempel switched it up my senior year, and he made me run the ball sometimes if, if I was needed. So, Which we saw in the playoff game. Yes. A very nice playoff game that you had. Um, it was down against Caravel, correct? Mm -hmm. And you ran the ball out of the eye, I think. Yeah. Multiple times. <laughs> very, very nice yardage. So. Thank you. How about you? What was it like? What's um, it like not? I mean, you you were playing with him to yes. your last year. But what is it like going out in the way? I mean, it's it's very different because you know you have somebody there that has your back. You know, not saying that the other players don't have your back, but they're not like your brother. You know, but. Uh, football was football was okay. It was, but I think basketball it was it was more important to like have each other's backs than anything. Probably because there was less players and yes. having two of you that knew each other for so yes. long and much Eric, much easier. Eric probably averaged more fouls than he did points. <laughs> that was the goal. That was the goal. That was the goal. I, was I just had to say, I didn't even want to play my junior or senior year. I just played just because he asked me to. All right, so you're Good going point. in. You're going into Very Delaware. Good. And the last time you played football, you were a starter. Yeah. Uh, where do you expect to be on the depth charts at linebacker in the spring? I guess we'll see after spring ball, you know. Where do you I'm think you'll start? I mean, no, where do you think you'll start on the depth charts this spring at, at linebacker? Where will you be? Second, third, line? Where do you think you'll be outside? Well, right now we only have two middle linebackers at the moment. But so you plan to play in the middle? Yes. Okay. We'll probably get switched around. I like middle better than outside, so. Why? You know. Um, less running, less, less coverage, but I mean, I'm fine with that too. I got played seven on seven, that's all you do when you play seven on seven is cover running backs when they run out. But um, I like just seeing the ball, being in the middle, and just being the first person to hit the runner when he comes to the middle. So he's mean and nasty is what well, he's saying. He, he, he has to be mean and nasty. But they're and about five and inches taller than he's used to playing against. That's the, that's the difference between this particular level. Because they just tend to be bigger athletes. You know, now at your level, they're big and they can run. At your level, they're big, okay, and some can run and some can't. That, that's why they, the difference between why a lineman plays at a 1A school versus a 1AA, unless they want to start as a freshman and they want to go in and they just want the opportunity and they say, well, they're going to find you. If you really want to play on Sunday, if you're good enough to play on Sunday, I don't think that anybody gets missed anymore. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to play against defensive backs, something you didn't have a whole lot of that could really cover <laughs> you, okay? It's going to be a little different. <laughs> with speed, size. <laughs> They're going to be, uh, you're going to have some covered Athletic corners that are, that are really uh, pretty special. What are you looking most forward to playing at Delaware? Um, right now, I'm just looking for like, the bond and have like, the family that we had in high school and college. You missed that? Yes. You missed that. And you're going to form a new family. You're going to yes. have a whole different group of guys that are from all different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, where, Coleman, you said, was his, yes. his name? Where's he from? He's from Maryland. Okay, so you guys are not that far apart. Yeah. But that's the biggest thing, I think. I mean, we talk about going to the NFL and dreams of those things, but the biggest thing is, is you're going to form these bonds for a lifetime. And mm -hmm. you could probably ask Dr. Axe, Mike here, that how many he has had from Bucknell from playing football there. And he still keeps in touch. He still knows what they do. And, and you got your education you got your athletics, and then you also have the friendships that you're going to build and family things that you're going to eventually go to somebody's wedding or their kids, you know, being born, and you're going to mm -hmm. be involved. So it's, it's a nice thing to be able to So what do you think of that bit. championship? We just had the championship girls basketball oh team on youth and sports. Did <laughs> no. they excite the school a bit? Yeah, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, it was real big. So who's your right. favorite player on that, that girls team? <laughs> oh, you're not allowed to ask that. Well, he's allowed to have a favorite player. I would probably say uh, Macy. Macy, Macy I think that she's. Did, did Jocelyn not have a game and a half in that championship, though? Yeah, she had a great game. She had a great season, by the way. Yeah, she really did. We had fun. I thought that that was a, one of those special times when everything she touched went in. You know, any time you hit more than 60% from the field, 75% from three, and you know, uh, 85 to 90% from the line. You've had a day. Yeah. You've had a day. That's an ultimate team, as we talked earlier. They, uh, all of them were scoring. All mm -hmm. of them played together well. Are you going to play any type of uh, pickup basketball? Do they let you go on the basketball court when you're playing football at, Del at uh, Rutgers? Or do they try to frown, keep you away from that? Uh, I'm not really sure. 
I would say they would or they wouldn't. I wasn't sure Stay what the guys do for fun. Stay yeah. off the basketball. Stay off the you know, that's Thank a, you. Just yeah. end up getting yourself in some other injury that yeah, you just don't want. ankle or something else, you come down funny for whatever. What do you do to relax, Eric? For like in college? Or? Yeah, what do you do to relax? Yeah, what's your time that you're, you have? I mean, my roommates are really cool. But I mean, like during workouts and school, you don't really have that much time to relax. I got that. So you now you need time to <laughs> relax. But how about so. hobbies? Hobbies is what he's asking. Do you guys play hobbies golf? Like, do you just, guys fish? Do you oh, anything? Do, I like just hanging out with some of the players. Sleep. You know. Yeah. Sleep? More just I just sleep. You're yeah, you don't have, yeah, he has to sleep. You don't get that much time to sleep. How many hours a night do you need? About uh, at least nine. <laughs> you need nine hours of sleep? I need nine. Sometimes more. How are you, Eric? How many do you need? I could, I remember I finished the paper at two o'clock in the morning, had a drug test at five, and then had class at nine. So I only need that much sleep. Okay. I'm wide awake. Uh, <laughs> all the time. Which side do you fall on, Mom? <laughs> the heavy sleeper? The heavy sleeper side. Okay. Oh, man. I, I need more sleep as I've gotten older, <laughs> let me tell you. I, I used to be able to get away with four, and then it was six, and I always tell the story, Dr. Strait, that I used to be able to stay up and consume, then I could stay up or consume, now I can't stay up nor consume. It's like I've... Uh, uh, I'm losing one of those, but I can, stay, I can still stay up. <laughs> I can definitely still stay up. Are you going to come back and, do you, do, and watch high school football? Uh, yeah, I'm on breaks because, you know, I, got I still, one big got, one still got a lot of friends playing at St. E's. What happens if you make it to, the, uh, to Sundays and you get a big paycheck and everybody always asks you, all right, you have Rutgers and you have St. Elizabeth's. Mm -hmm. What does St. Elizabeth's need? How can you help them? What do, you like think that. That, what do you think that from a facility standpoint that you could help them achieve if you, you know, if you knew that the NFL had a little bit of a match uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, and they do, by the way, they have a match into your foundations. Most of the players form their own foundations, and if they contribute to their foundation, the NFL will contribute an equal amount up to $10,000. Mm -hmm. uh, that was started a number of years ago, and uh, it can be taken. You can do it any way you want. So the mm -hmm. most of them put it into their own foundation. But what do you think from a, you've been at school now for St. Elizabeth's, Elizabeth's for four years. They have the new gym, thank heavens, because we had to play in the box. The weight room is, huh? yeah, the weight room is a nice weight room. I'm very proud of that weight room. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, what do you think would be a, another thing that would add to the school? I would probably say expand it a little bit because, you know, at St. E's, it's just a, the second floor. It's just the high school. It's the second floor, and then you got the classes over in the St. E's Center. So usually between classes, it's a little clutter because it's, there's a lot of people. So, I mean, I would probably expand it. A couple more classrooms, something like, like that. Like it, we went education. See, I, I would go sports, I can't <laughs> lie. I I played over there and I played on Camby Park's baseball field. And <laughs> I don't know how many bad hops I got and how many times it wasn't raked. And yeah. I'm talking a new baseball field, a new football field. Facilities wise. Facilities wise, get them. We're going to knock down though to put in the new thing. Uh, We're gonna... We may have to buy Camby Park. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we want to thank you for, uh, for sharing this. And, Mom, we said we were going to have that last segment. So please share with the parents out there. You've had the, the luxury of having two athletes that have been recruited, uh, originally at Pitt, uh, a big school, uh, and one of my near and dear to my heart, uh, having been the physician when, when Marino and company were there. And uh, we have Rutgers now. What would you tell a parent out there that has a, a young athlete who... Uh, looks as if they're going to be recruited to a 1A school and has the talent to be able to do that. How do, what would you tell them? The like Andre said, uh, do your research on a school first and then try to develop a friend on a football team or whatever team you're being recruited on. But also, if you're a woman, to understand that men don't think you know what you're talking about but it's always gonna come back around and it's always gonna be a time where you can say, I told you so. Because if you do your due diligence, then you can make the best decision. What would you do over again, Andre, uh, through that recruiting process? Is there anything you've learned that if you could recommend to someone, don't do this because it really didn't work out? <laughs> Any, anything? You may not want to tell us everything. Please. No, 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 no. I meant, but there's something that you learned in the process that you didn't know or didn't expect that came 
uh, away from what you would have normally anticipated? Well, I would probably, if I were to go back, I would probably would have visit more schools. Because Taking advantage of that, but you yeah. had basketball. You really had limited weekends to be able to do that. Yeah. I mean, they put I off did. the friends game so you can go on your uh, <laughs> on your recruiting weekend. I mean, that's when you know that. Well, yeah, you know that that's a special time. Mm -hmm. What did you learn, Eric? Um, I learned that you really have to like study the schools and visit a lot of schools. But my whole thing is everything happens for a reason, so. Around so much that way, yeah. you yeah. know. I I, I went to Bucknell, and people you. said, "Why did I choose Bucknell?" They they hit me. They they what happened was they took me to see a Greek tragedy as my recruiting weekend, and it happened. That I was a Greek buff, and I really liked the. And they didn't know that, but that's how it all happened. So instead of going to visit, I canceled my other trips to my major colleges and said, "No, I'll go here." This is perfect, and, and uh, you will be happy wherever you go if you want to be happy wherever you go. It's down to a minute. Thank you, Patents, for coming in and, and sharing your uh, experiences with us. And uh, you were, were a joy to watch play. I, I look forward to Very watching you play every week, and I look forward to watching you on TV and catching a few along the way and hopefully uh, seeing you play on television. It's really nice to see the bond between you two as well. Um, Thank you. you know, I, I say it and share in, you know, uh, lip balm in between and talking in between and I just it's really nice to see that between the two of you guys and I hope that stays you know solid through the next four years when you're at different places and you guys have given Delaware a lot from sports perspective and seeing and both your athletic abilities are awesome so good luck and Thank thanks you. for coming down. This no was problem. the patents this is youth and sports and this was uh, the spring of 2013 sharing the family experience with you viewing audience. What does opportunity mean to you? At Wilmington University, it means finding your relevance in the job market. That's why we offer career-oriented degree programs that meet employment needs in emerging fields. Dedicated professors bring their real-world experience into the classroom so you'll graduate with the tools you need to succeed on the job. It's your degree. Make it relevant to your career. Personalized education, affordable tuition, that's the difference at Wilmington University. This show was sponsored by ATI, the company taking physical therapy to a higher level throughout the country. First State Orthopedics, where youth and sports hosts Dr. Strait and Axe are members of the team taking care of Delaware with a commitment to excellence. And President Jack Barcelona and his Wilmington University College of Technology, where each semester this student-run program is produced, directed, edited, and distributed under the guidance of the TV production faculty. Each guest receives a copy of the show, and all shows are available on the web at youthandsports.com.